Good morning, everyone. As Pete said, I traveled far and wide to get here, and he did my introduction very well for me, so you know who I am and why I'm here to talk about the new electrical demand, uh, British Columbia perspective. Now, before I get started, can I get a show of hands, those who actually live in British Columbia right now? Wow, it's a lot of you. Great. So I don't have to tell you that uh, our great province is an excellent place to live and do business. Businesses that locate in BC will experience a very stable political and regulatory environment, which could be very much appreciated, especially in this industry. Uh, BC actually has the strongest economy in Canada, with the highest projected real GDP growth, the lowest unemployment rate, and the biggest wage gains nationwide. Geographically, BC is in a prime location with easy access to the west coast of the US and many air, rail, and road connections throughout the rest of North America. Our ports actually have the shortest distance uh, to the Asian market, so moving goods across the Pacific is easy and fast. And if you're looking for labor, British Columbia is home to a workforce full of diverse, skilled, highly educated, and multilingual people for you to choose from. Residents of BC enjoy an excellent quality of life when it comes to safety, healthcare, educational resources, infrastructure, and the environment. And with our provincial government's recent release of our, their climate action plan called the Clean BC Plan, it's an even more formalized commitment to a strong, sustainable, low-carbon low economy for the future. So that's why BC. Also, a bonus for this industry, we have some really cold climates here, and so if you're looking for free cooling or to reduce your cooling costs, it's a good place to locate. A little bit about the company I work for, BC Hydro. BC Hydro is a crown corporation established by law and regulated by the BC Utilities Commission. Its sole owner and shareholder is the government of BC, which means BC Hydro is owned by the people of British Columbia. We're the third largest utility in Canada, and we generate and deliver electricity to 95% of the population of the province with a service territory that reaches almost the whole province. We have approximately 2 million customer accounts and provide service to 4 million uh, people and businesses. And the electricity we supply is vital to BC, British Columbia's economic prosperity that I talked about, the fight against climate change, and our quality of life. A little bit more facts about BC Hydro. We're a fully integrated system of 30 hydroelectric generating facilities two natural gas-fired generating facilities, hundreds of independent power projects, connected by approximately 86,000 kilometers of transmission and distribution lines. That's more than enough to wrap around the earth, not once, but twice. There's over 300 substations in our system for us to maintain and serve you, and our installed capacity exceeds 12,000 megawatts. Last year, we consumed 50,000 gigawatt hours of domestic electricity. And to put that in perspective, the average household in BC uses 10,000 kilowatt hours per year, so that's 5.7 million, 5 .7 million um, homes worth of electricity in the last year. I want to tell you a bit more about the product we sell to our customers, namely our low-cost, reliable, relatively uh, abundant and clean electricity. We can promote this asset to industries that have choices on where to locate and invest their, their resources. What we're telling these industries is that our rates are competitive with other utilities across North America, we have a reliable grid, and we have an abundance of clean and renewable energy for, your, for businesses. I said our electricity was clean. By law, we're required to generate at least 93% of electricity from clean and renewable resources. However, we've done better than that. In partnership with BC's clean industry, including over 134 contracts with independent power producers across the province, which generate from biomass, small hydro, wind, and solar, we have averaged 98% clean or renewable energy over the past five years. What does clean look like in terms of emissions numbers, and how does BC Hydro compare? From this graph, you can see that BC Hydro's electricity emits only 31.7 tons of carbon dioxide per gigawatt hour. 
Compared with other utilities in Canada, such as Alberta and Saskatchewan, our electricity is significantly less carbon emitting. Now I'm going to talk about why my department exists in BC Hydro. So over the past year and a bit, BC Hydro has had nearly 12,000 megawatts of load increase. That's basically like our entire system capacity again. Uh, from existing and new energy intensive industries, such as LNG and upstream gas, fuel processing, cannabis, and data centers, including cryptocurrency mining operations. As I mentioned earlier, that's, that's the size of our system. So I'll break these inquiries down by sector so you get an idea of who we've been talking to. Nearly 5,000 megawatts of the inquiries of the 12,000 have come from cryptocurrency companies. So as you probably can guess, due to the bearish market, the inquiries have increased quite a bit in the last few months. However, we still have a healthy interest from this sector. Just for your interest, I know it's not the topic of this, this uh, conversation, but 1,900 megawatts of our inquiries have been from LNG companies. 1,100 have been from cannabis operations, so that's pretty large too. Nearly 900 from the oil and gas industry and 800 from the mining sector. Around 600 megawatts from fuel processing industries. And then about 670 megawatts from data centers that are not uh, blockchain related. So in order to effectively deal with this large volume of inquiries, BC Hydro formalized our group, uh, the business and economic development team, it's the team I work on, and gave us a mandate to proactively attract new energy intensive industries from emergent sectors to our service territory. So what our team offers is a single point of entry into for new business wanting to locate in British Columbia, and we're here to help them understand how to get connected with our clean electricity grid, what their approximate electricity costs will be, and some possible options for locations for their businesses. I mentioned we've had nearly 5,000 megawatts of load inquiries from the cryptocurrency industry over the past year and a bit. Of those inquiries, about 2,000 megawatts, so about a sixth of our total system capacity, are considered active and are in various stages of our interconnection process, so in various stages of trying to become interconnected to our grid. 1,110 megawatts are in the pre-study stage, so they're, tra they're active inquiries, but they haven't moved beyond that. 20 megawatts have invested in the system impact study, which is the first of two required studies BC Hydro has to do in order to interconnect your load to our transmission system. 25 megawatts have moved on to the facility study, which is the next required study. And then we consider about 30 megawatts are implementation. So they've, they've finished those studies and they're getting ready to be connected. We're tracking that six megawatts has been connected to our grid, but we know that that's not an accurate number. There's several more uh, small crypto mining operations that we don't even know about because they're not reporting as such, and so we don't have a sense of what those are. So we're saying six that we know of that we're tracking. So as you can see, there's still a significant and healthy interest from the crypto sector, if you consider it's a sixth of our total system capacity. So the two key items that we hear about from cryptocurrency mining operations are minor hosting companies, what they want to know when they're considering locating BC is what is the rate for power and how fast can you connect me? I mentioned before that our electricity rates are among the lowest in North America and to see where we stack up have a look at this chart. It's from the latest Hydro-Quebec study showing rates for large power users in North America. As you can see, we're, we're not the cheapest but we're near the top. Our rates are designed to recover the costs of the, the wonderful system that I described, all our generating and transmission assets. And they're designed to be fair and non-discriminatory, and they're published in our electric tariff. Any changes to the rates or any new rate designs have to be filed with, reviewed, and approved by the BC Utilities Commission, our regulator. So BC Hydro doesn't have Unlike some other utilities, we don't have the ability to negotiate rates or give better prices for, for long-term rate commitments. A little bit more about our rates. They're cheaper on a per kilowatt hour basis if you're connecting to our high voltage system, our transmission voltage system, which is primary voltage of 60 kV and above. This is to recognize that you need to build and maintain or secure the rights to use a step-down substation to serve your site. 
A typical crypto operation taking service at our transmission voltage will pay 6.4 cents Canadian or 4.8 cents US per kilowatt hour all in. And just to give you an example, a 20 megawatt crypto mining operation running 95% of the time can expect to pay just over 10 million Canadian or seven, around 7.5 US million on your hydro bill in a year. Does that sound cheap or what? Not to me. <laughs> it's a lot of money. If you're taking electricity from our distribution system, which has been stepped down to a lower voltage to serve your business, uh, the most common primary voltage of 25 kV or 12.5 kV, you pay less per kilowatt hour if you're a larger user of power. So our large general service rate is for people that have a demand of 150 kilowatts or above or use 550,000 kilowatt hours of electricity in a year. Uh, so just to put it another example, a 5 megawatt mining facility on our large general service rate running 95% of the time can expect to pay approximately 3 million Canadian or 2.2 million US per year on their hydro bill. So although we have some of the lowest rates in North America, we want to ensure our rates continue to be affordable for our customers. And we know that the price of power is extremely important to the blockchain industry, especially in this bear market. So we've been developing and evaluating a number of rate design options. Um, some I talked about, if, if anyone has heard in the media last fall about a load attraction rate, we're not moving ahead with that rate, but we're looking at moving ahead with an, it's called an incremental energy rate. And it's for non-firm power, and it's for our transmission service customers. And it allows them to access market-priced energy, which may or may not be a deal compared to our domestic rates. Typically it is, but um, a couple of Mondays ago, I think the price was $1,000 Canadian per megawatt hour for, for power in the mid-Columbia region, which is the market we use. So that's not cheap at all. Customers, um, so this rate, a little bit more about it. Customers that have been operating on our default transmission service rate for a year and have established an energy demand baseline can qualify for the rate. And uh, we're hoping to file an application with the BC Utilities Commission in the near future, so stay tuned for that. This is my last slide. Where you, um, to answer the question of how fast we can connect you, our team can provide you options for where to locate, we don't want you spending too much time or money uh, in a location that might not be uh, ultimately meet your needs. Because where you locate in BC impacts how quick or expensive it will be to get service from BC Hydro. As one of my colleagues says about interconnecting new customers, anything is possible with enough time and money. I think that's probably true about anything in life. Um, if new customers want to be up and running quickly, though, and with minimal additional costs, we can help them steer clear of areas that have capacity constraints and instead find them areas with capacity that's ready to go. So on this topic, we have existing BC Hydro customers in the um, pulp mill, sawmill, or mineral mine sector that due to changes in the economy have either shut down or curtailed their operations. These brownfield sites, as we're calling them, may have existing um, operational customer-owned infrastructure that's already connected to BC Hydro's grid. So what my team's been doing is facilitating introductions between these existing customers and new customers looking to locate their operations in BC. So the new customer and the existing customer site would need to negotiate a utilities agreement or separate land lease and wheeling agreements so that the new customer gets access to BC Hydro's grid through the existing customer's infrastructure. For transmission service customers, we have an indirect service tariff, which allows the new customer to still be a customer of BC Hydro, so billed and metered by BC Hydro, while, um, taking, not, while taking the service through an existing customer's infrastructure. That means the existing customer doesn't have to meter or bill or act like a utility if they don't want to, and the new customer can be BC Hydro's customer. So, this arrangement, new load on brownfield sites, is beneficial to the new customer and the existing customer. The new customer gets to be online faster, and the existing customer gets a new source of revenue for an otherwise shut down or curtailed site. But it's also beneficial to um, ratepayers as a whole, because it means that BC Hydro is not building significant new infrastructure to serve a load. Any questions? They were in Canadian dollars, yeah. Canadian pesos. <laughs> Hi. Y 
Yeah, it's called the incremental energy rate, and we engaged on it um, with the public through the BCUC in the fall of 2018, um, along with a few other rate designs, and that's the one that we're looking for uh, for applying. And again, it's for non-firm power for our high-voltage transmission customers, and it allows them to access, access market price energy, mid-sea market price energy. There's a light shining in my face. I can't see. <laughs> Anyone else? Too expensive. Too expensive? Yeah. Okay. What what uh, what price do you need to half? Half. Okay. <laughs> ha so if I have a half price sale at some point, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Mm-hmm. That's an excellent question. I'm not sure. I mean, we don't right now, but you never, you never know. Um, I, I, I can't see it in the immediate future, though. Sure. There's people in the room that have a lot more experience on the ground that I recognize. Um, that feel free to chime in. Um, so. From my experience, it does take a, a bit of time to, the existing customers are in various stages of comfort with working with these new customers. So, um, so that's part of why team's gonna put in some effort with maybe educating and looking for more sites and working with the existing um, site owners in maybe best practices. We have published um, a bit of a guidance for how to do a wheeling agreement uh, and that sort of thing, but it does take a bit of time and negotiation and it's certainly not as quick as I would have expected, if that answers your question. Yeah. Um, yes, we do. Chad, do you want to? Yeah. Yeah, there's one at um, the, the former Houston Forest Products mill site that's up and running, and it's with Mining Sky. Um. I'm not sure. Uh, what are you referring to? Oh, okay. I meant in BC. Yeah. So uh, we're all talking. We're talking about building our. Um, so my goal, my team's goal, is to to increase our customer base in BC. Sorry, is that a free service? Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and it's a, a light touch. So it's basically our knowledge of our system. We can help you locate in areas where we have the ability to serve you versus maybe an area that's going to cost millions of dollars because it's already constrained and our system doesn't work there. So it's just based on our knowledge of the system and being able to guide you. Uh, First. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think that would be meet our non-discriminatory um, uh, criteria. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We're trying. This is great. Lots of questions. Anyone else? I can't see. There's. Okay. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>